Hi everyone, it's Monday at 1 o'clock Eastern Time and this is Admissions Live. I'm your host Nicole Lentini and today on the show I'm speaking with Elena Wong, uh, West Coast Regional Director of Admissions at Drew University to share our top 10 list for travel tips. Admissions Live is part of the Higher Ed Live Network, a series of professional, uh, professional development web shows and podcasts which are always free and accessible to you in the archives at higheredlive.com and on iTunes. Be a part of our broadcast by tuning in live and sharing your insights and questions using the Higher Ed Live hashtag on Twitter. You can receive weekly updates with live show dates and times by subscribing to the Higher Ed Live newsletter. Today's show would not be possible without the support of, of Champlain College and of M. Stoner. Higher Ed Live is produced by M. Stoner, a marketing and communications firm that works with education institutions on branding, strategy, web design, and more. In July, M. Stoner is hosting an in-depth two-part webinar series focused on how colleges and universities can offer program, major, and degree pro pages that don't suck. These are the products of our institutions these are the products our institutions offer, excuse me, yet many degree pages on .edu sites are long, lackluster, and lifeless. We're tweeting out a link now, very soon, where you can learn more and register. We want Higher Ed Live to be your first professional development destination online, and part of that goal includes evaluating how we're doing and how we can improve show content and your viewing experience. We're currently running a survey for you to tell us what you'd like to see from Higher Ed Live. It's easy, simply fill out the short survey online. It shouldn't take you more than five minutes. Participants can choose at the end of the survey to enter a drawing for a $100 Amazon.com gift card. So I will be tweeting out that link very soon. You can also find it at higheredlive.com slash survey. Admissions Live is also sponsored by Chegg Enrollment Solutions. Chegg, the student hub, has recently published its first edition of new publication designed specifically for today's busy enrollment managers. The Enrollment Services Digest includes great information about transfer and graduate recruitment, as well as in-depth research on student use of social media during their college search. Admissions Live is also sponsored by Welcome to College. College visits made simple. The mission of Welcome to College is to help students find colleges where they will flourish. They believe it's all in the visit and have created free web and mobile applications to plan, rate, share, and compare the entire college visit process. Parents and high school counselors can also create an account to share their impressions. Check out Welcome to College today. So to set the stage for today's show, um, even though we are still enjoying the summertime and enjoying, um, in some cases, the last bit of time off before leaping full-fledged into travel. Um, it's absolutely a time that travel is very much on our minds and we're planning and getting loads of mail of all these college fairs and so um, Elena and I wanted to put together a show uh, to be able to give tips that hopefully can help both uh, new entrants into the profession as well as anybody who's still in the profession even a few years later have a few travel seasons under your belt uh, but still thinking of ways to be able to make the most of travel whether it's in the planning stages, uh, in the kind of prepping for travel stages in the few weeks before travel or actually in the process of travel itself. Uh, so we hope that this top 10 list will help you to be able to kind of make the most of your travel. Um, but before we get into that, I want to of course introduce Elena, uh, who is one of my favorite friends from the road. We met way back at Summer Institute at NIACAC, which is currently going on right now actually. Um, and so Elena, do you want to introduce yourself and a little bit about your history with admissions? Of course. Well, thank you for having me, Nicole. Um, so again, my name is Elena. I'm the West Coast Director of Admission for Drew University, uh, and Drew is located in Madison, New Jersey. I started, this is, I'm crazy enough, entering my eighth year in uh, higher education in the admission world. I uh, attended Wheaton College, Massachusetts, and I kind of volunteered there for, you know, four years. And they, you know, said, oh, we have an opening. Uh, once I graduated, so I applied. I was about to turn them down and say no, thank you, um, but I got some guidance from some incredible mentors who said I think you should really consider it. So I took the job with Wheaton and I uh, worked there for five years. And during my five years, I traveled to my main travel areas were Oregon, uh, Washington, Northern California, Maine. Um, and I did a few trips to China with a few other uh, schools. So I was kind of all over all over the place and had to plan travel very much accordingly. Um, I am originally from San Francisco. I'm from California, so I wanted to be back in California. And so when I uh, just was thinking of, of you know moving back, Drew called and said, hey, we heard that you're interested in moving back. Would you be interested in being a regional? 
um, I love liberal arts, and so I uh, I've been with Drew for two years, and I travel from I travel all over, but I read for about 15 states uh, for applications. So I'm traveling traveling quite a bit. Excellent. They keep you very very busy out there. They <laughs> they do. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, I'm so glad to have you on the show, and you clearly have had quite a bit of time on the road um, and a variety of places, so I'm excited to have your input on this particular topic. Um, so before we get into the ten, top ten list, um, I want to just kind of set the stage for the, the amount of travel you currently do, and you started to get into it there, but um, can you talk a little bit about kind of what your travel timeline looks like, particularly in the fall, um, how many visits you typically do, um, and maybe a little bit of how that may have changed between um, your time at Wheaton and now your time at Drew, if at all. Yeah, um, it, it has changed quite a bit. I travel quite a bit more for, for Drew. Being a regional, we're really trying to, you know, get the name out there, um, really, you know, connect with counselors, you know, not, you know, and tell them that, you know, we're a resource. I'm a resource for them out in the West Coast. Um, so I will travel from the middle of September. Just I feel the beginning of September, students are still just trying to adjust to the whole being back in school. Um, so middle of September to, to November. Um, last year, I went to 131 high schools, which is crazy, uh, and I went to about 20 college fairs. So it was, you know, going from place to place, uh, traveling in, you know, Southern California with the traffic. It was, you know, a lot of planning, a, you know, planning ahead. But for Wheaton, uh, I would really only travel to about 100 high schools and, you know, about 10 to 15 college fairs. So it, it has changed. I am increasing my travel. Um, but it's so fun. It's so fun to meet new people and to, you know, work with the students. Absolutely. And that kind of positive attitude is just <laughs> as important as the rest of the list that I think we're going to go through. Um, and I am going to jump into this topic as well today, too, because I have actually the exact same amount of years under my belt as Elena does. So um, just to give the same perspective, uh, I'm, of course, with Champlain College. I've been, I'm going into my eighth year. Um, we travel the same amount of time, pretty much mid-September into mid-November. Um, and yeah, we do about 90 to 100 visits a piece, I think, at least, if not more than that. So uh, very similar timelines. We do have a uh, regional recruiter. I don't know exactly how many visits she does, so I don't know how different that piece of it is here, but just to give that kind of perspective. Um, but the number one that we're going to jump into, and I think we're kind of breaking it down a little bit into before, leading up to, and during, and we didn't even touch after, but I think it's good to briefly include after at the end if we have a little bit of time. So. Um, one of the biggest things we want to start with is using data, using knowledge, using past history. You want to make the most of where you're traveling. You don't want to kind of just look at a, put your territory on a dartboard and just throw darts at it and kind of figure out, okay, that's where I'm going. You want to put some thought into it. So what kind of tools or knowledge do you use when you start planning your travel? I use a I use a few things. So we um, I'm looking at the data from the past few years of where are our students who are uh, who have you know deposited? Who have enrolled? Where are they coming from? Because we want to make sure that we're going to be visiting those schools. Where are the students who are applying? We want to be visiting those schools. So I'm not just you know Google search. Let's see what high schools are in the LA area and let's visit all of those high schools. It's more of let's let's look at the data from the past few years and let's make smart decisions about where we're going to spend our time. Um, so that that's I think the number one number one thing you know I you need to look at institutional history um, and and also your institutional priorities in terms of where where you want to look um, so with that we we look at that but we also are looking at you know the EPS enrollment planning services part of uh, College Board we're looking at you know the breakdown of of areas um, to find out kind of where we should spend more where we should spend less time and and just and checking that all out. Yeah, that I and I would back you up on that. I mean, I think history of the school is one thing, but I think what EPS and Forecast Plus and some other tools like that gives you is perspective on places maybe you're not familiar with, but actually could be a really, really great fit for your school and a good one to go to check out and um, include in your search. And also just getting the name out there into a wider circle without doing, like you said, kind of Google searching, oh, what's the closest and hitting that <laughs> school on the way, um, which, you know, I think can be tempting when you're new to 
into the industry at first. You just go, well, I'm here. You know, I have this school 10 minutes away. I'll just swing through there. And maybe that can be a good thing. Maybe it could be enlightening. Or maybe it could be, you know, not efficient in the long term for your for your travel planning. And you don't want to wear yourself out more than you absolutely need to. You're already hit, hitting potentially four or five schools in a day. So you want to make the most of the schools you are visiting. And um, I think that mm -hmm. if I can looking at, at data from the past years, you know, we had one student who enrolled from this one school and I came back this past year and I had seven students waiting for me. You know, so once you get one, they all talk, so, you know, hopefully more, more will follow. I, I completely agree. I love that the power of a student's a friends circle and the larger, larger kind of way to get the word out there. It can, it can absolutely have a ripple effect. And um, I've seen that even as far out as Colorado, which is pretty awesome to get to see that you know we can travel all that way and say, oh, we got a student from there last year, and now we have multiple students who are thinking of applying. So I completely agree with you on that. Um, so I think other things that are important too is just looking at you know if you are are thinking, okay, I don't know how this school is going to pan out, but I'll give it a look. Whether you're using EPS or not, you can still find out the size of the high school and maybe, you know, if you have a great business program and they have FBLA or they have DECA um, or something like that, that can actually really help you to figure out, okay, well, at least I know a particular piece of this school that maybe can make it a great fit for us. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about research, too, a little later. Um, so moving on to number two is being proactive and planning ahead for anything that can happen. Um, I think any admission counselor that you speak with has just some amazing woes of things that happened on their road. I mean, the most ridiculous stories. Um, my own personal favorite is driving through the same toll booth five times in New Jersey because I just couldn't put together the local versus express lanes. It's embarrassing to share now, but if you're a first-time traveler in New Jersey, New Jersey roads are confusing. I love New Jersey as a state, but it can be very overwhelming to travel in it first. And I know every counselor has stories like that, so um, maybe I couldn't so much plan for that. But there's other things that can happen. You know, something could happen to your car, you could lose your materials, things like that. So um, what kind of tips do you have for sort of planning ahead for the oops moments, Helena? <laughs> uh, a, f a few. I think it's really important for you, uh, every person should make copies or scans of their credit cards, their their university credit cards are personal, their IDs, if you're traveling internationally, you really should scan a copy of your passport and have it with you uh, via in your Google Drive or in your email just in case something should happen. It's a lot easier. Um, I, I don't have experience with that, you know, luckily, um, but I know people who have had issues and so having, having things ready and available uh, instead of just trying to memorize them it's going to be much easier for you um, so I would that's one thing always bring materials if you are checking a bag always bring materials with you in the carry-on because what happens if your bag is lost and you don't get it for three days you want to make sure that you have things or at least inquiry cards but just bring some things with you um, and you know not only should you bring your of course your ID everywhere but also bring your university card because there's some schools that for to or in order to check in you need to show uh, your university ID of course your passport if you need your passport triple A uh, and your health insurance card that should be with you wherever you go I've heard many stories of people getting hurt and not having it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all really important pieces to have on you and to have just prepared to take with you because you don't want to be running out the door on your first trip and realizing an hour in that you don't have any of that on you. So this, you know, as soon as you can start packing up for the trip and start putting those pieces together in a safe place um, and getting those copies made, the better off you are instead of being a few weeks in and realizing you don't have any of that. Um, also, I think, I, I like that you mentioned packing a few items in your carry-on, um, and we'll talk about this a little later in clothing too, but if you're flying, and this is closer to in the process of traveling, but 
uh, we got some great advice from the College Admissions Counselors group on Facebook. If you're not already a member, you should be. And somebody mentioned, if you're flying, travel in a professional, um, in professional attire because if worse comes to worse and you do lose that suitcase and you at least still have your carry-on, you'll have hopefully at least the clothing that you have on you and some of your materials that you can get through a day or two safely um, and not be out there in jeans or a sweatshirt or whatever you flew in um, with no materials and hoping to just have students write their name down on paper so that's really smart advice for planning ahead in time yeah um, exactly yeah and I'm sure there's all sorts of other things that we can include in there too and they may come to us through a lot of these next few points too um, so something else kind of coming into once you once you absolutely know your region especially if it's a new travel territory um, is really gonna it's really gonna be important to research the region and get to actually know where you're going um, a good piece of a, a good example of that is my New Jersey story um, if I had gone into traveling in New Jersey being a little bit more familiar with when you're on the throughways and on the interstates and knowing when you should be in the express lane and when you should be in the local lane it seems silly to me now but at the time it cost me some really valuable time when I was traveling back and forth to these different schools um, or knowing how to properly drive through a jug handle um, and New Jersey's not the only place that has these unique driving um, kind of situations or things but it's a good example of that um, and it's even more important if you're traveling internationally so do you have any uh, insight on that on the kind of research that you do leading up to travel? Yeah, I do. I um, so I travel all over California, and you know, California. There's some crazy, crazy traffic in California. You know, I finished a college fair at one point. At we, I was in the car at 10:30, so I'm on the road, and there was traffic. There was a backup at 11 o'clock at night. I was like, where am I? What is going on? Um, and so when I am traveling a lot in, in the LA area, I am moving around every single night from hotel to hotel because I want to be as close to the high school in that next morning um, instead of just waking up and hoping to get there on time because I know that the traffic patterns are going to be so crazy um, and so frustrating. So I think it's really important just to be prepared. You know, you don't want to be running late into an appointment, or if you are, you don't want to be, you know, very upset because of this traffic for, for an hour. Um, so I think, you know, learn about that. Um, you know, in terms of New Jersey, it's, it's I don't live in New Jersey, but all of a sudden, I, the exit is in the middle of the freeway. It's not on the side. So here I am exiting, you know, not knowing where I was. So it's really important just to, for your own sanity to learn about this so you know that, so you can be prepared for, for your day. Absolutely. Um, and I think that's especially true, you know, <laughs> not just important. Sorry for any counselors who are listening from New Jersey. We're not trying to pick on your state. You just have confusing roads. But um, it can be just as true. And I travel here in Vermont now and being familiar with road closures and things like that. I actually um, lost an hour worth of travel time because I drove all the way down this country road just to find that the one bridge that I needed to get from point A to point B was closed. So I had to backtrack all the way back around so any research you can do ahead of time even just checking out kind of keeping an eye when you're on the road and you're if you're watching TV anyway if you have it on don't be watching I mean I know it's tempting to watch some of the trashier TV and we all are guilty of it but if you have some time put on the news put on the local find out the local weather find out uh, the traffic reports figure out what's going to affect you and make sure you plan that into your day um, I think that also helps and I think this can kind of fit into the research idea and also we'll mention it later with um, connecting with counselors but um, plan an ex some extra time into your travel anyway when you're putting together the schedule and you're sitting in your office at the beginning of the season put in that extra 15 20 minutes whatever you need to in between your visits don't stack them one on top of each other because you never know what you're gonna hit like traffic at midnight or whatever the case might be um, so just be prepared for wherever you're going and just learning general customs especially like I mentioned with international students I mean the Customs there may be very, very different than here. So being familiar with um, does it make sense to shake a student's hand or does it make sense to um, use particular wording about a program, just being more aware of the way that you're presenting information is going to be so important no matter where you go. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. I was going to say, I don't know if they have anything else to add on that, but I don't think we can um, undersell how important research is ahead of time. 
It is, it is. And also, you know, for for me, I would rather be at the high school in the parking lot, uh, you know, 15, even a half hour ahead of time than, you know, frantically trying to get there and running in at the last minute. Absolutely. Yeah, better to sit in your car and hang out for a bit than run in sweaty <laughs> and 10 minutes late. <laughs> awesome. Um, so hopping into this is also with the kind of prep and planning. Um, organization is so important. I can admit this is something that I still struggle with day to day, um, but I've gotten a lot better with on the road because there's so much you need to keep track of. You need to keep track of your materials. You need to keep track of your own personal items. You need to keep track of your receipts. Do not lose your receipts. Yeah. I can't stress that enough. Um, so there's so many important things to bring with you. And um, actually, the receipts in particular, before you go out on the road, have a special pouch or a special place that you put your receipts into. Get one of those plastic folders or have a special place in your purse. Just do not lose those because they will only cause you woes. Um, actually, there's some great advice from that same college mission counselor group. Um, that one counselor said that they actually took pictures on their phone of smaller receipts. Um, and in some cases, you can even submit these instead of the actual paper receipts. So if you're worried about losing all these pieces of paper, just quickly snap a picture of it on your phone, and then you don't have to worry about it. But um, some phones you can even, like I know with, I have my beautiful Samsung Galaxy here, plug for them, but um, what's cool is that with that phone I can actually hook it up to my Google Drive and it can automatically back up all my pictures there. So um, you don't have to worry about it and you can make sure you have those receipts so you don't have to track those down for finance at a later point. Um, Elena, other important materials, to, or if you want to jump in on the uh, receipts topic, but any other organizational tips? Well, something that I have that I got from the container store is a small little accordion file. I needed something colorful so I wouldn't lose it in my, you know, sea of, you know, black technology items in my black purse. But then I, you know, very geeky enough, I labeled it. So I know coffee, gas, tolls, um, dining, anything. I can just hotel, you know, rental cars, I can just put in there and I know that it's all there. Mm -hmm. um, so I keep this with me where, wherever I go because <laughs> do not lose receipts. I think that would be the common, you know, saying in the whole admission counselor group. Don't lose receipts or else you will be hated among your, your college campus. Um, so yeah, I think that that's very important. I also think that we rely so much on just, you know, technology, you know, the GPS to get you there. When you do your research ahead of time, make sure because high schools have moved. There are some places that have moved or, you know, the GPS doesn't understand the location. So also people uh, in the group think, and I totally agree, bring a printed map with you. Um, don't just rely on, you you know, your Garmin or your TomTom -tom to, to get you to where you need to go. Um, all other, you know, bring a compass or have a compass on your, um, on your phone as an app just, you know, in case you know, you're given directions that, that that's what you need. Um, so, you know, try to do things so you're not, again, just relying on technology. Um, and I think it's really important, you know, if you have, I always have my purse and then I have a bag in which I carry, you know, my travel brochures. And just make sure that's organized, it's clean, so you know you can just grab things out when you need to. Um, I know it's a very, you know, basic idea, but it, it really, if you just have all of your papers and everything else in there, things can get kind of gross and, you know, torn and ripped, and you don't want to be giving that to, to college counselors and to families. Absolutely agree. Um, and I actually, while you were sharing with that, I kind of came, I, I was thinking of another piece to add to this, and then I checked our Twitter feed, and Ashley, um, Ashley Budd, prior host of Admissions Live, added, and I would back her up. Um, Back, back up your visits as well to your phone on Google. Um, you can back it up to your Google Calendar so you have it easily accessible to you. But I wouldn't even add to that. Think about having a printed out or paper copy of it on you anyway, um, because I actually had a colleague of mine who traveled out to Colorado with me, had all his visits in his phone, didn't realize that his phone would update the, and change all the times by two hours because of the distance he had traveled. Um, so he had all of his visit times incorrect in his phone, and so he potentially could have been late to all of them. So um, it's always good to sort of have a backup to the backup. So it's a great example with the GPS and a map. Um, 
having the paper copy of your schedule along with the electronic copy will just save you some serious headaches um, and some serious uh, math later on having to figure out all your visits and correct them. So, um, so great feedback. Thank you for that, Ashley. And I also want to say to any viewers out there, if you have any other travel tips while we're talking about these, please uh, uh, use the hashtag higher ed live and share them with us and we'll try to make sure we mention them on air too um, and continue the conversation after. So that was a really important and good topic on uh, organization and just in general making sure that you're organizing your materials in a way that makes sense is going to be so important. Um, Another big topic, and there's two pieces of this, but I think they can kind of come together in a way too, is safety, and then another one is health. So we'll talk about safety first, but um, one of the things that we mentioned a little bit earlier, but I think it, it, you want to make sure is kind of accessible to a larger group is be aware of your own itinerary, but make sure that your colleagues are aware of it too. Where you're supposed to be, what time you're supposed to be there, um, how to try to find you if you're not where you're supposed to be. Uh, sometimes this can help with when you're booking visits, making sure that the school has your office number as, along with your cell phone number. Um, but it's it can be dangerous out there, especially being a person who is doing most of this work by yourself. I mean, yes, you're meeting with people, but you're spending a lot of time by yourself so it's important that people know where you are and when you should be there um, and also I shared having some um, keeping some emergency gear in your car a first aid kit some water a flashlight um, checking in with your rental car company to make sure you know where a um, where the jack is if you need it but also being aware of their emergency number to call um, if something does come up along the way um, but any other safety tips from you Elena I mean, I think you, I, I think you hit the nail on the head uh, with that one. And so, I, um, in terms of making sure that your office is aware, in terms and also being organized, I always have a travel binder with me, and I will, you know, for each trip, I'll do a sheet if I'm flying, what the flight number is, my confirmation number is, you know, and maybe a printout of the actual confirmation. Um, you know, the rental car agreement, you know, and I just have all of that, and then I can send that to my office. So my office also has, you know, a sense of, okay, she's going to be on this flight going here. So they they, they know where I am uh, at all times. Of course, they have a schedule of my, my high school list and my travel itinerary, um, but it's also important to know that they know what flights you are on and, and share that with your family as well, you know, so everyone can, can have a sense of where you are. Definitely. Really, really good advice. Um, and also, this is less safety for yourself maybe, but also safety of being aware of your personal belongings and your surroundings that um, I've gone too many times that I've passed by uh, other rental cars in the lots at college fairs and things and counselors have left their GPS right in the dashboard. Don't do that. <laughs> Put it away, you know, hide it, maybe even tuck the cords away. Uh, it's an easy mistake to make, especially when we're going in and out and in and out and in and out of buildings, but I've heard too many stories of counselors who have had their cars broken into and had their GPS is stolen or their phones stolen or anything like that. So um, just be safe, kind of do a quick look around the car. Um, um, see if there's anything valuable sitting out and tucking it away um, will really save you woes later. I've even heard stories of counselors getting their table banner stolen, which is baffling to me, but um, is absolutely something that can happen. Uh, I don't know what the, what people stealing the banners want to do with the college banners, but either way, you know, just tuck anything that um, is even remotely valuable just away. There's plenty of hiding spaces in the cars that you can do that. Um, and, you know, other safety things that would be, that would come into play anywhere. Parking in a well-lit area, um, traveling with people if you can, stuff like that goes without saying. Uh, yeah, so parking to college is quite nice and it's very, you know, you, you're, you're interacting with other people besides high school students. But also, if I may, uh, yeah. you also want to uh, you know, yes, your car is, you should be careful about your car, but also your, your college fair table. I have seen so many people who leave their iPads out while they go, uh, you know, get a snack or go to use the restroom. So put, put things away. Absolutely, yeah. It doesn't take much to just tuck your iPad away, bring it with you, or, you know, you... I, do, I wouldn't trust 100% and lean on 100% on other counselors, not to say you can't trust them, but um, because you can, but even asking a colleague nearby, can you keep an eye on my table while I run and get a snack or whatever, um, is fine here and there, but if it's a busy fair, you don't want them to have to track somebody down for you that, still, that walked away with your iPad, so just tuck it in your purse or bring it under your arm, take it with you, bring it back, it's not going to go 
that badly missing in those few minutes that you're gone. So that's really, really great advice um, of just keeping an eye on things even then. Well, we're in yeah. spaces with too many people too fa uh, too often to really not keep track of everything. And especially talking about all the important things that you're going to have on you when you travel, like we mentioned earlier, it's going to be really important. Yeah. Um, so we mentioned, I mentioned a little bit about health, and this is one of the number one topics that I think a ton of people who were giving us some uh, some of their own feedback mentioned is keeping healthy on the road. Um, so I'll let you talk about this first, Elena, and then I'll back you up afterwards. Yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, when I visit a, last year, I went to 131 high schools. You know, you're shaking hands with people, you're, you're interacting with them. Um, you are getting up, you know, very early to make it to, I'm sure we've all had that 7.30 appointment, you know, we want to be there right on time. Um, so we really need to make sure that we are we are taking care of ourselves. So you're, you're eating right. Fast food can only go for so long, you know, so you want to make sure that, you know, if you are eating that, you're also supplementing it with salads and just other more nutritious meals. Uh, later on, um, that I think is it's it's very important. I always so I have a weird travel schedule in terms of when I eat. I will always make sure I eat a really big breakfast. That's like I have to do that, and of course coffee. So I have to have a really big breakfast, and then I get like snacks that I bring in in the car with me. So I don't I don't stop for lunch because usually I don't have time to stop for lunch. Um, so I always have, you know, granola bars, almonds, power bars. I just have things that I can eat, you know, while waiting for my next high school visit. And that, you know, will, will sustain me. And then I have dinner at like 4 or 5 o'clock at night <laughs> because I know that I need to get to bed soon so I can get up the next morning. So it's a very odd eating schedule, but it has really, it's, it's I love it. Um, but make sure you have snacks because, you know, you never know when you get hungry, you need almonds, but make sure it's you have some, some nice protein instead of just sugary snacks to, to kind of keep you going. Um, I, I always now will bring a reusable water bottle with me. Um, just I think it's important that I my first year I, like, drank no water, and that was really cool. <laughs> Bad idea. <laughs> Yeah, please don't do that. Um, you know, so yeah, so I bring a reusable water bottle. I'll fill it up at high schools, or if I go to like a Panera or something, I'll fill it up there. Um, so make sure you do that. I also will bring a reusable coffee mug, but that's probably not a health thing that I should talk about. Um, you know, and and you know, in the downtime to kind of relax and let loose, it's I think it's important to uh, explore, you know, where you are. If you're in Seattle, go, you know, check out the sites or wherever you are, go check out the sites. So bring comfortable sneakers so you can go out and walk around and, and, and see what's going on. I always, always, always have Advil with me and I always have cough drops with me, even now, just no matter where I go. Because I, I, I know counselors, when we talk a lot, especially at college, we'll lose our voice. It's important to have cough drops to help with that. Um, in Advil, you know, carrying all those materials can be, you know, can hurt your back. So you want to make sure that you have uh, something to help with the pain. Yes. So that, that is I, things that I do, and I know that was reiterated in the uh, admission counselor admission group. Yes, quite frequent. Yeah, the, I, I think all of those suggestions were backed up pretty heavily in that group, um, and I completely agree. I mean, uh, the idea of bringing snacks, especially almonds. I'm glad you mentioned because almonds can kind of um, help, you know, kind of fill you up a little bit more when you do have to go longer periods of time so you don't feel faint or feel ill, but, you know, don't be afraid to. Most of the school counselors are wonderful, very friendly people. I hope we have a few of them uh, viewing the show today, and they gave some great advice, too. Um, and sometimes they'll have snacks, sometimes they'll at least have water or coffee or something, so if you feel like you're just feeling faint or anything like that, let them know, and they'll do what they can to help you out. Um, yes, it's an exhausting job, but they want you to be healthy as much as you would want to be healthy, and your boss wants you to be healthy, so, um, you know, don't let it wear you out, and I've been guilty of this myself. If you get sick on the road, take care of yourself. Don't put others in the danger of getting sick from you. Don't make yourself feel worse, um, and I know I need to take my own advice. If any of my coworkers are watching this, they'll probably be yelling that at me, but, you know, if you do feel ill, call the schools that you're supposed to be visiting the next day. See if you can reschedule. I know it's never necessarily ideal, um, but better off that you get that time, that extra day to be able to rest um, and 
and feel a little bit better than come in and not be at your best and, like I said, potentially make others sick too. So take good care of yourself. We don't want to have a bunch of sick admission counselors out on the road. Yeah. Um, oh, and also, also yeah. bring, if I may, I bring emergency with me. The little powdered packets of emergency that you just put in water and drink, mm -hmm. it is fantastic. And they have some nice flavors. They do. They do. I've also, um, I'm a big fan of the Alka-Seltzer cold tabs that dissolve into your water if you're feeling not too great. I don't know. Maybe it's the um, placebo effect, but I am a big fan of them. They've helped kind of pick me up when I'm nearing the end of the week and I feel like I'm coming down with a cold. Sometimes they can help. So, um, but yeah, emergency is great. Um, and airborne, I've heard some counselors using as well, so that can help too. But make sure you stay hydrated. I know we've already said it once, but we'll say it again. Keep hydrated, keep drinking water, um, drink it whenever you can, uh, take advantage of it at schools, keep yourself hydrated, because as Elena mentioned, it's all too easy to not, <laughs> especially in the first season. Um, so getting into... But we've talked a little bit about packing, but as far as packing clothing and attire, we talked a little bit about um, kind of when you're packing it away in your suitcase. But in general, what is um, what's your best sort of clothing advice for when you're starting to put together your travel package? I think it's 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 very interesting because I've heard you know just some different things that I, I'll talk about. But you want to make sure that you're comfortable, but you're professional. Um, you know, I, I, my first year, and maybe you did this, you know, as well, Nicole, I was wearing high heels to college fairs, and I was trying to look, you know, this whole part, and I'm like, what was I thinking? You know, wear flats, or, you know, wedges, or something that's comfortable that you can walk around in, because don't just think that when you walk into the high school lobby, that's it, that's where you're going to be. A lot of times you're walking all over the campus uh, to make it to your appointment. So make sure that you can walk in the shoes, because I've had issues where I'm like, oh no, what am I going to do? Um, because you know you don't, you, you, you want to look the part, but you also, of course, want to act the part. Um, so yeah, so flats are, are, I love flats. I That's all I travel with right now. I, I used to travel with heels, but First, it takes too much space in my suitcase, and I just flats are so much more comfortable. Um, you know, and, and and bring also you know professional clothes, but also bring more you know relaxed clothes so you can you know have dinner or not wearing a full suit or, or khakis and whatever. But what I think was so interesting this year is I had a counselor at a high school talk to me, and I'm wearing you know I was. I was I, th I was appropriately dressed, and she, she commented, and she said, thank you for being appropriately dressed. And I was really shocked by by that, and I said, oh, you know, you're welcome, kind of. I, I, I would hope that everyone else is doing this, and she, uh, we kept talking, and she said, no, um, a lot of counselors are wearing jeans and flip-flops to, vi to my visits, and she said, and I've had a few wear cargo shorts. Um, and t-shirt and she said my students were more dressed up than they were and it's so hard because they're tr they're representing the school and the students were having a hard time you know really taking them seriously but, you know dressed as, um, as they were dressed and well, so I'm not is it, I, I found that very interesting yeah um, just make sure that you know you are being appropriately dressed whether it's khakis and a polo whether it's a full suit whether it's you know a jacket and tie, you know, whatever it is, um, but counselors do notice. Oh, absolutely, and I'm glad that you shared that story because I think some of us may think that we're all going out there professionally dressed, and so does it really make a difference? It does. It makes the students respect you more, um, makes the, the other counselors respect you more, uh, makes you less likely to be spotted in the hallway and have somebody think that you're actually a student there at the school and tell you that you need to get to class. Um, <laughs> so all of these things can, it can help, it, it absolutely makes a difference, uh, which I think many people know out there, but maybe it's good to just kind of hear that re reiteration. Um, yeah. I'm jumping in on you here, but I also I heard a great tip from a colleague of mine who suggested when you're packing for a week, pack within the same color scheme too um, because you're saving yourself shoes, you're saving yourself accessories that otherwise you have to mix and match and if you can say, okay, I'm bringing my black shoes and so I'm going to bring, you know, my black pants and my black skirt and, you know, making it a little bit easier rather than having to pack 
four or five different pairs of shoes and all that, you're going to overload your suitcase with accessories and then, um, or you may end up like me and realize you only have so many shirts and you have more accessories than the actual amount of pieces of clothing that you need to make through the travel week. Um, so keep that in mind as you're putting together week to week. Um, well, and part of the whole Facebook group, they had, someone had the best idea, and it's, while if you're eating on the road, which we all do, put an old towel on top of you, so if things spill, it's spilling on your old bath towel, not actually on your clothes, which I'm like, oh my gosh, that's, that's so brilliant. I mm -hmm. never would have thought that, but, um, you know, you want to make sure that you are, you are looking professional, but it also... You know, if you haven't, if you're traveling for weeks on end and you can't do laundry, Febreze with Gain is amazing. You, it is, I mean, it is incredible. So, you know, make sure that if you can do laundry, do laundry, but, you know, for a few days, if you can't, Febreze with Gain can, can, can do some wonders. <laughs> can make the difference. <laughs> yes. <You can. laughs> and actually, that, that uh, kind of, transitions quite nicely into um, sort of items don't leave home without. Um, and one of mine, along with Febreze with Gain, which I actually haven't used in there, but I certainly will add in there, I never, ever, ever leave for the road without a Tide to Go pen. Um, because the amount of times that I have spilled coffee on myself or any other food items or gotten it on my tablecloth at a college fair if they give you a snack, um, it's too many to mention. And so just having that on you and quickly dabbing it, especially when you're on your way to a visit, um, can really be so handy to have. Um, other items, and, and I'll, I'll mention these, and if you have any others, feel free to jump in, Elena. Um, chargers. Do not forget your chargers. Do not forget if you have an iPad on display on your as a display on your table, make sure you have that charger um, and that it works. I actually realized mine only would charge if it was plugged into the wall, and if I plugged in in a certain way in my car, it would not charge, so be aware of that. Bring your phone charger. Um, bring your GPS charger, um, an iPod charger, if you listen to that in the car. Um, I actually, I should have had it with me to display uh, during the show today, but uh, they actually make transportable, tiny little device, little versions of chargers that you can plug into the wall or charge up on a computer, and then you can throw that in your purse or in your travel bag and be able to just plug right into and charge up your phone on the go. Um, so if you can invest in one of those, I think they run as cheap as $10, or uh, if you have one like mine that you can plug a few things into, I think it's $40, so um, worth it to invest in if you think you're going to have to charge up a lot on the road. Um, also, within the health and safety things, uh, keeping Purell or sanitary wipes that you can just wash things down in your hotel room, in your rental car, wherever. Um, wash your hands if you have a student that comes up to you and seems really sneezy and you want to make sure you don't get a cold, just throwing some Purell in your hands will make that difference. Um, other things that you would want to mention and make sure not to not leave at home without, Elena. Yeah, safety pins have saved me in, you know, some wardrobe malfunctions over the years. So have those on hand. Um, a small sewing kit that you can just get from the hotel, that's great to have on hand. I always will have extra Ziploc bags, you know. You never know if your bag for, you know, the TSA line will break. It's just, it's so good to have, you know, you can never have, in my opinion, too many Ziploc bags. So I think that's, you know, that those, those are great things. And I always will carry kind of also with the health and or safety or no, the health, um, little, you know, containers of like tissues, like little tissues that I keep in my purse. Just, you know, you never know when, when you need it or a student will need it at a college fair. It's just nice to have. Absolutely. Um, other little things especially, well, Females and males, I think this would both carry over for um, bringing a nail file. It's really good to make sure you have so you don't keep spending money on them um, at like Target or something um, because it's all too easy to just kind of hit your car door the wrong way and end up with a broken nail. And if you're a female and you're wearing tights, that's a very, very dangerous thing to have. So little things like that could go a long way to make sure you have on you. Um, cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, you should always, I, my GPS system died right before travel season last year, and everyone just said, just use your phone, it will be great. Uh, my phone died in the middle of, of my day. Um, I did have a, a charger in the car, but it just kills the battery even more. So I recommend, just if you haven't, you can get a GPS system for, for you know, 
a, a good amount, um, but that can really, really help. Absolutely, yeah. Having the GPS does make a difference in not having to use it on your phone because yeah, it, your phone can't charge as quickly as it can zip through the battery when you're using the GPS, I've learned the hard way. Um, exactly. Excellent. Um, so the last two pieces are really actually getting into the relationships that you're developing on the road. Um, and so a big piece of advice we have for travel is make connections with these school counselors. I mentioned it earlier, but um, they're there to work with you, your partners in this, your partners in finding the right fit for their students. And so um, it's so important to, to, to value that and to take it seriously. Um, getting to know the counselors in the school and asking them, you know, they'll have questions for you, but ask them, what makes your school unique? What makes it special? Um, what makes it different from the schools that maybe are also in this area and counselors are so 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 proud of their schools as they should be because they all, are all different and their communities are different and it's great for you to know that and hear about it um, I actually I don't know how many other schools out there I think a lot of us we on the admissions side we have to do travel reports um, and we put them on our shared drive here on campus but I've actually built mine into um, into my own personal Google Drive um, and along with taking the notes of the school and learning more about it I put in the counselor contact information in there the minute I leave the school so that I have that contact information and I can remember the conversations that we had um, because those are so important um, and also and Elena I know you've done these in the past so I might have you mention a little bit about them but talk to the counselors about what else you can do to support the school um, not just visiting the school in the fall but doing essay writing workshops doing interview work shops, um, participating in junior nights. Um, there's so many services that you can help support other schools out there and the school counselors that are doing this great work but may have massive caseloads. Um, and at the same time too, even if they don't have massive caseload, they can keep reiterating the same things over and over to students. It's great to have the admission support to back up what we're saying. So talk to them and find out how you can be helpful to them. Um, also, this was asked by um, one of the counselors I work with here in Vermont, as a matter of fact, if you're running late, let the counselor know. Just give them a call. Um, that kind of goes back to the importance of organization and having contact information for the schools um, in your phone or on paper, wherever the case might be. Um, just call the school and say, hey, hit some traffic or something happened. I'm going to be here around this time. They totally understand. And not just calling that school at that point in time, but if you have two other schools after that, maybe just calling them too to let them know that that visit might run a little bit over. Just being aware of that, um, letting them know is really appreciated. Um, and my last bit of advice, and then I'm, I'll let you jump in with anything else, Elena, is um, I love asking counselors, where should I go get coffee? Where should I go get lunch? Um, I have some time to kill. Where should I go? Um, they there's so many great places in these little towns and cities that we're traveling around and you could miss it if you don't ask people who know the area well and are really proud of these places you can go to. Um, I travel in Vermont as I mentioned and while I've gone to school here and um, spent quite a few years of my life here, there's so many places I've never been to before so I try to even make sure I ask counselors in Vermont about that. Um, and also asking them directions and if they give you directions take them and value them because um, there's too many times you could end up on a random country road thanks to your GPS that um, won't take you where you need to be. So listen to them and they can direct you to the best place to go. So um, that's a lot of pieces of advice. Anything else you'd add to that, Alina? I really, I think you uh, you were exactly right. I totally agree with everything. And, you know, I just want to reiterate, remember that they are your colleagues and they are working with you to help their students, you know, go through the process and, you know, help them, ha uh, you know, if is as, as much as you can, whether it's as you're writing workshops, panels, anything, you know, just be open and available because, you know, it will, you will really strengthen your relationship. And they are incredible. They're so fantastic. Um, and, you know, I was able to do, for the past few years, do some essay writing workshops at Berkeley High over the summer. So I spent uh, three to four days uh, for the past two summers just working with all of the juniors on their essay. And it's, you know, it's an incredible opportunity to work with the counselors there and with, work with the students. 
Yeah, and you know that uh, the students appreciate it and they remember you and even if they don't end up applying to your school, they appreciate you because you gave them that valuable feedback and that's what the counseling relationship is really all about. Um, so I'm glad that you've been able to be involved in those. I've tried to do the best I can too and I think it's such an important service that we should be doing while we're out on the road and even not on the road during other times. I actually got to do uh, a social media workshop at, um, at Vermont Commons here uh, just down the road and it was a blast. I had so much fun and I felt like I was actually providing a great service to the counselor and to the students there. So really great advice. Um, and the last piece, my favorite piece of all of this is having fun on the road. It's taken for granted but it's so 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 important and this is where friendships like the friendship I've made with you Elena is so important. Um, it, I'll give my few pieces of advice and then I'll let you kind of wrap up this piece of it, but if I can just impart my number one piece of advice, especially to new counselors on the road, is put your phone away when you're at college fairs. Turn to the person to your left and to your right and get to know them and get to learn more about who they are, what they're excited about in this job, where they've been. You could learn valuable information as far as how to do your job better. Uh, you could learn more about schools and areas that you're in, but more than that, you get to make friends. And these people are the only people that will fully understand what this bizarre life we call admissions is like. So they're important friends to get to make on the road. So um, when you're at that college fair, it can be so tempting to just, you know, play around or send a Snapchat or do whatever, but talk to the people around you um, because they can end up being your best friends, your bridesmaids or groomsmen um, or just the guests at your wedding for that matter. I've seen that so many times. For that matter, they can end up as your future husband or wife, who knows? But if nothing else, they'll be some of the friends that you keep the longest, um, especially through this crazy travel season. Um, so that's my piece of advice and I want to give one other piece and then I'll let you share all of yours, Lena. I, uh, I found I got very bored on the road of listening to music all the time. Um, and so, Elena, I know that you uh, shared books on tape, has been, or books on, I don't know, audio books, I guess is the proper term for them now. I don't know. Books on tape, that's such an outdated term. But um, those are great. But also, I love podcasts. I listen to a ton on the road. Um, there's so many good ones out there. And a nice little plug, we actually have a Higher Ed Live podcast. So if you want to kind of... Uh, update yourself and be aware of what's happening in the higher ed live or higher ed world. You can download those podcasts for free, but there's so many other really great um, free podcasts out there too. So you can download those on your iPod. You can fill a ton of them on there um, and have them during your travel season. But yeah. anyway, I'll let you jump in now. <laughs> also, thing you know, I think I I love it. Um, you should also bring you know like you know, some, you know, serious books and some funny books to just have in case you, you know, are having dinner by yourself. Um, magazines are kind of the same thing. But also, I really, what, taking off of what you said, if if a counselor invites you out for dinner or drinks after college fair, I know it is so tempting to go back to the hotel room and put on Netflix and just, you know, watch whatever show it is. It's 30 Rock for me. Anyway. Um, <laughs> I really encourage you to go out because yes we might be tired and exhausted but again that's how these relationships develop um, and you can meet again meet some of the best people on the road you will meet some of the best people on the road um, so go out be social and again it can be challenging after a long day of visits and college fairs but it's going to be so rewarding at the end knowing that the next at the next college fair you know who you can talk to and you can go get a drink afterwards. Um, so I, I, I'm, I'm speaking from experience because I literally, there were four counselors who invited me out and I was like, I'm going to just go back to the hotel and just not talk to anyone and not do anything. Um, maybe have a glass of wine, you know, just kind of decompress. And I, I was like, no, I have to go out. I have to. And they are, it, it was so great. And I'm still in touch with them. And that was, you know, eight years ago. So go out if a counselor asks you out. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I, I can't give that advice more than anything else I think we're sharing today. I mean, it's, it's 
just so important to keep yourself sane when you're on the road to make these friends because no one else is going to understand what it's like to hit five high schools in a day and a college fair and have weird questions come up or have these just bizarre experiences. No, none of your friends at home understand what that's like. And yeah, it can be tempting to watch 30 Rock at the end of the day. Mine is How I Met Your Mother. You know, we all have our shows that we would want to just sink in and watch and kind of turn our brain off for a bit. But give it a chance to even go out just for dinner with one or two or with a group of people. Um, that being said, if you're going out with a large group of people, make sure you ask for separate checks before you put in your order. <laughs> My last piece of advice I'll impart on you because otherwise those those servers will not be happy with you um, and neither will your finance, uh, finance office back on campus if you don't make sure to bring those receipts back. Um, but yeah, but, but above all else, have fun because travel season is crazy and busy and everything in between, but it's where you make some of the coolest friends, I think, that you can find, especially in this profession. Um, so, this sorry. Last. Yeah. My, the first year for someone in, you know, someone just starting in the admission profession, it can be a very lonely year. It can be a very challenging year. Um, so that's why, you know, just as you said, and I, I think I'm, you know, like, you know, keep hitting the dead horse, um, but just go out, reach out, and talk to people because after, you know, so many dinners by yourself, it is nice to connect with, you know, people your own age. Absolutely. Uh, it's so, so, so important. And, you know, I think what's great, too, is if you go to these different places after the fact that they're from, you have these friends you can connect with in all these different locations. I've been talking for months about how I need to make it out to San Francisco so I can visit you, Elena, but, um, you know, yeah, the, it's, you can't say it enough, you know, it's so important to make these friends on the road. So I'm glad that, you know, yes, we're beating a dead horse, but it's an important one to, to really keep reiterating because I think it can be way too easy to just kind of Keep with keep within yourself and not get to connect with others, and you don't you yeah. want to avoid doing that because it can burn you out really quickly if you don't take advantage of these friendships. Right. Um, so, I mean, that's just as great a piece to end on. But any other advice or um, anything you want to impart on the audience before we end our show today, Elena? I mean, I think it's you know have fun, get excited when you're going to visit the high school and talk to the counselor, um, and you know. Just go out and network and, and talk with people, and I think you guys, you know, people will be great. We can we can tell you more and more tips, but really, you, for people just entering this this whole profession, you really have to have a year to understand what we're saying because some of it might not make any sense. This is very, very true. <laughs> yes. So hopefully heed some of our advice, but yeah, experience it yourself too. <laughs> it's it's a unique job, but is but a wonderful one without a doubt. Well, it's incredibly rewarding. <laughs> it is. Thank you so much, Elena, for being on the show today. Of course. Thank you for having me. My absolute pleasure, and I used your Twitter handle earlier, so hopefully uh, the viewers will reach out to you. You're at Elena at Drew, so at symbol, <laughs> Elena, E-L-E-N-A-A-T-D-R-E-W. Um, exactly. Twitter, chat with her. She's wonderful. If you're out in San Francisco, go visit her, you know, all that good stuff. Um, so thank you again. Um, and thank you always, as always, to our program sponsors, M. Stoner, uh, Chegg, and Welcome to College. Coming up next on Higher Ed Live tomorrow, Ryan Catherwood speaks with Patty Daves from the University of Virginia and Adrian Dareff at the University of Oregon about alumni association membership marketing. Get reminders about this and other great shows by subscribing to the Higher Ed Live newsletter. Browse the archives at higheredlive.com or subscribe to the Higher Ed Live podcast on iTunes, as mentioned earlier. And don't forget to fill out the survey at higheredlive.com slash survey. I'm Nicole Lentini, back, back next month with more Admissions Live.